Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in today when we take a look at the Piston Honda Mark II by Industrial Music Electronics, formerly The Harvestman. The best way to describe the Piston Honda Mark II is that it is a wavetable oscillator and digital wave shaper combined into one. It has an internal oscillator that runs through the selected wavetable, as well as an external input um, that will process that signal through the same uh, wavetable. Um, you can use them separately or in parallel, and I find this is one of the most overlooked aspects of this module, uh, the external wave shaping, and I personally find that it's one of its strongest features, um, but we'll dive in, into that in a bit. The internal oscillator is pretty straightforward um, with a one volt per octave input, uh, external uh, or exponential CV input, as well as an AC coupled linear FM input uh, that will do through zero uh, audio rate modulation, uh, and they share a, the attenuverter control. Um, a sync input for hard sync, and lastly, a range switch to operate in um, audio rate mode or LFO mode. The wavetable section is described in the manual as a three dimensional cube of 4096 possible waveforms. That sounds pretty daunting, but thinking of it in another way makes it a little more simple. Um, the wave control selects between uh, 16 possible waveforms, uh, so hex zero through uh, F. Um, so it selects between 16 possible waveforms. And then you have the bank control, which selects between 16 possible banks of those 16 possible waveforms. And then lastly, you have the ROM, which you can think of a bank of banks. So each ROM has, each of the 16 ROMs has 16 banks, each of those 16 banks comprising of 16 waveforms. Because of this layout, it actually is incredibly easy and powerful way to traverse through this huge collection of different sounds, um, either manually with the sliders or uh, especially under CV control, where each uh, control has attenuverters for the inputs. The last area of note is the morph discontinuity section uh, for the wavetable. What this controls is how much smoothing is applied when different wave or banks or ROMs are selected. With a low morph discontinuity setting, the changes are morphed smoothly. Uh, and as morph discontinuity is increased, um, the changes between wave bank or ROM are less morphed and they're more abrupt uh, or, or kind of glitching sounding. The axis select button um, allows you to select which of the axis uh, is getting the smoothing applied. So right now with these two lit, it's getting applied to wave and bank. Lastly, the smoothing mode uh, switches whether or not the waveform filtering is applied to the internal oscillator or external oscillator or disabled for both of them. Uh, with the smoothing off, the output is a little more gritty and noisy, uh, and this will be good for some sounds and possibly less good for others, so just play with it and use it um, as necessary. That's basically the overview of the module, so let's just jump into some example patches. Okay, here we're just listening to the internal oscillator. Um, we're going through Optimix. Which I'll slowly uh, open all the way, um, and I'll just scan through some of the wavetables. So here, um, axis um, smoothing, the morph discontinuity is enabled for the wave and bank. And you can hear how those smoothly transition. If we were to crank up the discontinuity, making it less smooth. And here it gets a little jumpy. If we were to disable it completely for that, just turn it all off. It's a little bit more jumpy than if you just turn morph discontinuity all the way up. jump down, start scanning right through. One of my favorite things about these wavetables is even though they often tend to be on the noisier side, they have a huge range of tonality. So some, even though may sound buzzy, have a very, very large amount of, uh, of bass frequencies in there too. So bank will often produce, um, well, switching between ROMs will probably produce the largest 
change in sound. Um, bank, a little bit less so, uh, and Wave will be the sort of most smooth transition in, in timbres um, because the waves have been generally organized within the bank to kind of fit in, and morph in almost like a wave-shaped kind of way. That was just one ROM, so there's 15 other ROMs, um, and they each kind of have their own characteristic. For those of you that like um, low-pass gates, uh, I find that the um, Piston Honda makes great uh, source material for a plucked low-pass gate. largely because there's such a wide range of harmonic content. You have very deep bass tones, and you have very crisp, um, borderline, you know, really noisy, uh, higher ends of the spectrum, and that sounds great through low-pass gates. Let's dive in a little bit deeper. Okay, now we're going to be listening to um, external audio processed through the wavetable of the Piston Honda. So like I mentioned before, there's always an internal oscillator, uh, and that's always available out of the internal output, uh, and the pitch is determined by the pitch control and also the range setting, LFO or audio rate mode. Um, but you can, in parallel, process an external audio signal, and that will come out the external output here. Um, they share the same wavetable, internal and external, um, but that usually isn't too much of a, a limitation. So what I have here is the sawtooth output of the DPO going into the external in, and we're listening to just the external output. Um, the cool thing here is, um, depending on the gain setting, you shift the, the external audio coming in here up or down through uh, the wavetable. So it behaves very similar to uh, you know an analog um, wave shaper. Uh, and you have external CV control over the gain with its own uh, attenuverter, and we'll, we'll dive into that more in a little bit. P 
ping this gate. Let's check out some patches where we combine the uh, internal and external. Also worth pointing out is depending on the audio signal that you run in, you're going to change how it sounds to the wave shaper, just like any normal wave shaper. So before we're listening to uh, the sawtooth, and if we simply change that shape, triangle, get a very different sound. Obviously very influenced by the sound going into it, but... What we're going to try now is we're listening to the triangle through, uh, and I've put the internal L uh, oscillator into LFO mode, and I'm using the internal out to modulate the gain input. So now the wave shape here determines not only the wave-shaped uh, VCO sound, but also the shape of the LFO modulating the gain. I'm just going to turn up the attenuator. which also means as we change these wavetables, we not only change the sound of the wave shaper, we change the sound and the shape of the LFO modulating the gain of the external signal. also do some neat stuff with audio rate modulation from another VCO. So now I've taken the sine wave out from the uh, oscillator B on the DPO, and that's modulating the gain of the triangle wave from VCO A of the DPO going through the wave shaper. Maybe we can use that internal LFO mode to modulate some FM amount. So we can get some very cool evolving textures here and again we're listening to this wide open so um, you know running this through filters delays other things can get these amazing droning um, evolving soundscape textures this is of course still not having any CV modulation
kick in some delay and reverb and let this play us out. Patch the uh, internal oscillator here. Mix that in. I'm just balancing the internal oscillator with the external DPO processed Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Hope you guys really enjoyed the Piston Honda. Uh, I hope you, uh, at the very least, go try one out, but pick one up for you guys selves. Um, really see what this thing has to offer.